I decree right now that you begin to see the Lord arranging, rearranging, shifting, and changing circumstances for your good. In fact, I want you to repeat it. Say, I decree that I'm coming into a place of divine setup. I decree right now that I am beginning to see the Lord arranging, rearranging, shifting, and changing circumstances for my good. Come on, say it with your chest. Some of y'all are so weak. You're so weak because you've allowed your circumstances to suffocate you. Now you're like, oh, that's for somebody else. It's not for me. Baby! You know when God began to open the windows of heaven over my life? I unabandonedly would get up every day and say, Lord, I prophesy today that I am walking into blessed assignments. Yeah. Every single Sunday, I'm giving you word. Write it down so that you can go back. I prophesy every Sunday because I know what it's like to walk through something and not be able to pray. You ever been there? How many are there right now? I can't pray. Come on, be honest. What happens at Limitless stays at Limitless, but I got to know so I can help you. I can't even pray right now. And then we walk around saying, Lord, just read my mind. That is exactly where the enemy wants you to be. Let me tell you why. Because the enemy does not want you to open your mouth. A critical spirit, and when you do, a critical spirit brings forth poverty. Y'all hear me? A critical spirit brings forth poverty. Y'all hear me? A critical spirit brings forth poverty. So when the enemy jumps on you and makes you angry at something and you talk about it, whatever you talk about and concentrate on the most is what you're getting. My kid's going to go to jail. My kid's been to jail five times. I ain't got no more money to get them out. I spent all my 401k getting them out the last time. You know what? Whatever you focus on is what's going to happen. This husband's going to cheat on me just like the last husband cheated on me. This husband's going to cheat. You are driving the man crazy. I'm going to die just like my mom of cancer. I feel a lump. I feel a lump. No, you got a clog pour. The devil wants my marriage. Devil, no, 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 no. The devil don't want your spouse. He can't get married. But he doesn't want you to have it either. Because one will put 1,000 to flight, two will put 10,000. So the enemy tries to come in to steal, kill, and destroy and wreck you. Anybody ever said, man, when I started giving, I started having hell? Anybody? I, once I started giving, man, it was like hell broke loose. No, you were struggling before. <laughs> but you weren't expecting nothing. It's almost like when you get saved. Anybody ever got saved and feel like all hell broke loose when you got saved? As long as I wasn't serving Jesus, everything was fine. You know why? Because you were your own worst enemy. The devil didn't have to do nothing. You were doing it to yourself. <laughs> But when you got saved, when you know the principles of the Bible, it says, once you come to know me, all old things have what? Passed away and he's made you. So that means you ain't got anything in your closet. You ain't never got to say you're sorry for another thing on the planet because it's under the blood. Thank you, God, he's God and we ain't. But what happens is the enemy knows that the power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. So the enemy's going to make you petty, critical, Negative, he's going to magnify mountains in your life. He's going to mag magnify, magnify all the critical things. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to pull you away. Until before you know it, you are right back in the wilderness. Exactly where God saved you from. And so we've been in this series where we are learning about make it make sense. I was raised in a religion where uh, pastors broke. My daddy was broke my whole life. I mean, he had money. Like, I didn't st suffer. But I never saw, like, like business opportunities. And, and when God called me to be a pastor, I was having a hard time because I was like, I'm not going to be broke. <laughs> like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to work my butt off. My hustle is going to be holy, and I'm going to lead by example, which means I'm going to get so free from people that I begin to not focus on people, but I focus on God. I focus on the principles of God. And so when I became a pastor four years ago, I didn't know how to pastor. Like, it's almost like God gave me this promotion. I was like, there's nobody going to be in my church because I am not a coddler. I'm not coddler. I'm not like, I'm like, oh, you went back. Y'all went back. Y'all back together again. Y'all still screaming at each other again, right? 
oh, you did it. You, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the queen of let's own it so we can get free from it, right? Because the enemy does not come to, 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 to fight your life unless there's something in your life he doesn't want you to get to. Right? I'm teaching you every single Sunday, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. prayers, that you are a threat to the enemy. And it's not even, hey, y'all, even if you today go and backslide, you go to hell on a slip and slide today, you're like, screw that, like, bump that, like, he ain't never been there for me. I'm teaching you that at any given moment, you can get back up again and take back your life. It does not matter what you did yesterday. In fact, what's tea to them is testimony to you. Right? I'm teaching you how to embrace where you are so that you don't keep repeating where you are. Not deny where you are, but embrace it so you can fix it. My prayer every single day when I wake up is God let them hear themselves in their own ears and get sick of themselves. If they are, if they are sabotaging their life again, let them hear themselves in the ear and be like, oh, I don't even like you. So that you can fix it. Because I want this church to be blessed, y'all. I want you to own. I, I, he says, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for us. They always say, money don't make you happy. Bull loney. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Money don't make you happy. But it showed us help. One of the greatest causes in the world for divorces is what? What? Money. But yeah, we're going to go around saying, church, pastor shouldn't be this. Pastor shouldn't be. It's always those people too. You know, I love to, especially when I got time, when the haters come at me, I love going to look at their profiles. <laughs> Most of the time, none of them got profile pictures. Number two, broke. Broke. Angry. They look it. You know those people that wear their situation? Well, why do you do that, Pastor Kim? Because I need to be armed. Like, I got to be armed. Like, like, ever so often, I don't do it very much because I'm the queen of block. I block you so fast. Like, I love for someone to write a big old long dissertation to me about something that they don't have any clue. You sound so stupid. And then all of a sudden, I love it. I get this high off of deleting after all that blood, sweat, and tears you put to be critical. <laughs> I just block you. You ain't never going to be on. You're going to miss me. You're going to miss me because you ain't never coming back on my page. But why am I that way? Because for so long, my life was driven by religion. Religion was only us going to heaven. I remember I used to sit on the front row, and my daddy's choir would be up there singing. They all looked like Amish. My mom would make me go swim in the Atlantic beach on the furthest part of the beach where it was crappy and crusty because there was no other souls there. And we could not mix bathe at six. And I'd wear a long sleeves because you know them elbows are so sexy they're going to make every man fall. <laughs> I was six. I was raised under women were quiet. And in fact, half the time, uh, for, until probably 11 uh, years before my daddy died, he didn't believe in women preachers. And so I'm, all of these labels of special ed, y'all know I was in special ed, I still don't know where comments go. You guess why I'm teaching you how to be in the Holy Ghost so you can interpret my statuses. <laughs> but I look back today and I realize that every single thing that I walked through, thank God, that my father raised me and my mother raised me, that you learned a grace move. That means you can be one way for so long and then God deal with you and you don't even have to explain it, you just shift, right? Thank you God that I am not walking around with long blue jean skirts and kids. <laughs> Can y'all imagine Mimi? I saw a picture of her the other day. She looked like she was 70 years old at 30. Because women need some paint. I don't know why we need paint. Men don't. I always ask God, why do men just to get, get up and shave? And us women, if we don't put makeup on, it's like, what happened? You sick? You sick today? No, I'm just going all natural. But we do. Because God created a man to be, huh, hear me roar. And he created a woman to add the little cherry on top. Like we can walk into a room and he's having a hard day and we can come in and speak life over him and speak life into his body. And then you shift. Women are that powerful. But I had to learn that I was not the labels that were put on me. 
I was not who they say I was. I was who God said I was. And at the end of the day, I'm so glad that I walked through all I walked through because now I know how to take a licking and keep on ticking. Now when something is handed to me and I feel devastated and I feel broken because things don't look the way I thought they would look at 51 years old, I can realize that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am not my circumstances. I'm my comeback. You are not your circumstances. You are not your daddy. You are not your mama. You are not that bully in school that told you you would never amount to nothing. I was driven my whole life to run. Everything was boring. I just bored. I got married. Every time I ever got married, it's because I was bored. I was like, I just bored. And everybody kept telling me I was going to hell on a slip and slide. I thought of one more. Let's see if I'm going to go to hell this time. I was never one that was scared of anything. I didn't, I didn't just tiptoe. I showed him fast and pray about it. My last marriage, I remember jumping into it because I thought this man was going to be my, my, my financial plan. I thought for, for the first time in my life, I was going to get somebody that's going to take care of me. He was older, look, 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 older, distinguished, everything I did like. <laughs> I was still working at Bloomingdale's, still wasn't tithing, still wasn't giving, still didn't believe God. And I'm driving down the road and this man reaches out to me, slides in my DM on Facebook, and he had preached at TBN. <laughs> Daddy, I love you, man. He slid into my DMs and I was miserable one day and I, let, I l l went and looked at his preaching at TBN. I was like, won't he do it? He is holy. He is magnificent. I met him twice and married him. <laughs> twice. Facebook. Twice. Mimi was like, what you going to do, Kim, if, he, if he's it? Because these women were calling, begging me, girl, don't you, don't you marry him. He bad to the bottom. Don't you marry And Mimi goes, what's going to happen if everything they say is true? I said, I'll divorce him. <laughs> Because life and death and the power of my words, I was so broken that I never thought that God could turn my story around. And so what I did was I kept allowing my past to keep making decisions for me. I kept jumping in front of God. I never asked God. I was 40 years old before I ever preached my first sermon. I worked at Bloomingdale's until I was 41 years old, making $13 an hour, still not tithing. And one day I heard the Lord say, if you get your act together, Kimberly, laying in my bed, I went to every healing crusade trying to get the devils out of me. <laughs> I went to deliverance. I even tried to spit up. Because <laughs> you know, you see them people doing this. I even went, like just laying hands on me. I was ready. I was already doing this. Because I thought there's some devils in me. <laughs> Because I'm an idiot. My boys need me to get delivered. Sometimes you don't need therapy, you need deliverance. And I'm like, eh. and finally he just touched me. He said, slow down. His name was EO. And I just looked at him. I said, I think I feel some tingling. I think it's coming. He said, girl, you ain't feeling nothing. He said, God is a gentleman. He said, the only reason you'd be throwing up right now is because you didn't want to let it go. I was like, well, I see people all the time doing this. And it looks like they for real. Because it's, you know, you can just tell it's just normal. Like it's rhythm. They ain't like this. You know those people in church are like this? And then they forget this hand. I love you. Ever how you choose to get delivered, get delivered. But for me, that was not the way. He said, I need you to walk yourself through this thing. He said, I need you to realize that God already got on that cross for you, Kimberly. I need you to realize that cigarettes don't bound you. I need you to realize that bad relationships, oh, preach, Kim, bad relationships don't identify you. Kimberly, I need you to realize that when God comes on the scene and you really get out of your own way, he takes the time you have left. Ooh. He takes the time you got left. And he makes your promises come to pass. So he let you walk through it 
and he knew it was going to take you a long time because you were late bloomer. But what God was going to do with your yes. And some of you, you're in this mood. That's why he's scared of no devils. Let me tell you why. They're weak. Devils, the minute you know your authority, the minute you're doing what God tells you to do, well, how do I know if it's God? Is it in the Word? Well, I don't know if it's me or God. Did you pray on it? Is it in the Word of God? Because God is never going to contradict. He's never going to contradict what the Word of God says. The Word of God is your GPS. So as I'm teaching you this whole series, and this is the last sermon in this series, and I'm getting testimonies of, yo, your, your first fruit, which is 10 cent on a dollar, that's not just for your finances. That's the devourer off of everything in your life. You know what? There's two commandments in the word of God that you got to do. You know what they are? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. What's number two? Love your neighbor as yourself. What's the hardest thing on the planet to do? Oh, 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 oh. Because now we got social media. You're going to see every single post they ever make about you. Love your neighbor. As yourself, you know what that means? You got to get away from you and step into it. By his stripes, I'm healed. I carry the same oil as God. I carry the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of me. I want to kill you, but I'm about to go fast and pray until they can smell my breath the whole block away. I am going to push and pack my plate, and I'm going to say, Father, I need a miracle in my life in 24 hours. Some things only come through fasting and... When's the last time you fasted? Well, when do I fast? What, 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 how do I fast, Kim? How, yo, you Google everything else. How do I spiritually fast? Google it. And then do it. And then say, Lord, I'm not letting up until I feel a breakthrough. Ah. Money, say money, isn't my problem. My management is. Money ain't my problem. It's management. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he does it through afterpay. I went to a gap the other day, and they said, you pay him with afterpay? I was like, what? Afterpay. He does it through needing to keep up with the Joneses. Their bag is it's a fake. You trying to go buy Rob Peter to pay ball? Get that poochie. <laughs> or you go buy it for $2,000 and ain't nothing in it because you can't afford nothing. I just need to have this. Or the, if I get this, I'm going to feel happy. No, it's an inside job. When you get your inside right, it's the law of draw. Listen to what, listen to what Proverbs 11, 24 says. You ready for this? Y'all ready? It says, the world of the generous gets larger and... The world of the stingy gets. Anybody know any stingy people? You stingy? Look, y'all like, it depends on what you mean by stingy. It's hard when you're single and you're out here trying to put clothes on your kid. And that 10 cent, that 10 cent on a dollar seems really big. And the enemy's like, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to get you this week. Go on and give, and then I'm going to get in your mind, and I'm going to start making you think that God's on vacation. I'm going to make that lump feel like it's breast cancer. I'm going to make you lay awake at night in your bed, worried about your husband cheating on you, your wife leaving you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you feel like you ain't never going to be out of debt. So now you have just dumbed yourself all the way down to being broke. I lost everything in the pandemic. Anybody lost everything in the pandemic? Anybody? That's okay. 
Because God never lets what you've lost be greater than what he's going to bring in your life. You know what Ephesians 3.20 says? Glad you asked. It said he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than, huh? 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 He's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. But I got to be a generous giver. I got I to gotta make sure that I, my heart is right. Listen to what Matthew 6.33 says. Matthew 6.33 it says, but seek first the kingdom of God. I'm really feeling good about you guys. I got that right there. <laughs> I'm like, my church is getting to know the word. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Money is supposed to come to you, not a Away from you. Money's supposed to, how many struggle financially? It's the last time you ever own it. The last time you ever own it. Right now, go on and look. Look at your neighbor. Say, this is the last time you own in it. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at my bank account, and there's a lot of reds in there. Well, that's why, because your mouth. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is why the enemy wants you to worry. Oh, my God. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know how I'm going to pay. How When's the last time that kept you from getting kicked out? You got ulcers. You got injury resentment. You got fear. And it don't pay your bills. <gasps> it don't pay your bills. You don't pay your bills. Getting up every day and walking around your house. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the, and get dramatic. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Boom, 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 boom. Let the neighbors hear you. Even when I can't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops. He never stops working. Waymaker. You better sing, baby. Prophesy. Woo. That is who you are. to do that listen whatsoever you sow you shall reap feed what's feeding <laughs> bless ah, help pour into boo shaka laka listen whatever you invest into the most You better preach. Yo, when people start yelling out, I'm, I know they're seeing it. See, God sometimes lets you hit rock bottom to find out who the rock is at the bottom, which is Jesus. He like, I got to let you lose everything because, because if I didn't let you lose everything, you're going to stay in that place where they're sealing with your floor. Ah, whatever you invest into the most will give the most back to what areas are you underfunding and over expecting? Ah! You're underfunding and over expecting. You give your 10% one week, two weeks, three weeks. It's like trying to get back in them jeans from when you were in high school. Your whole body's changed. The only thing that fits since high school is your earrings. <laughs> but if you get on Snatch with Archie Kate and you make a commitment, no sugar, no creamer in my coffee, well, what am I going to do? We act like we're going to die. 30 days, I can do anything. Tell your kids, stop telling your kids, we broke. We broke. We broke. We broke. Stop. We can't afford that. Stop comparing yourself to your friends. They got a daddy in the house. We broke. You better stop it. You better start telling your kids, babies, we are saving up for our Airbnb community. 
This is a season where we're investing. Babies, I'm going to teach you how to tithe. Oh, you got some money from washing cars and mowing the lawn? You know 10% of that goes to, your, goes, to, goes to the Lord's house. I'm teaching you how to be a good business owner. I'm teaching you how to go from the, pet, from the pit to the palace, baby. Follow mama as I follow Christ. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You got to tell your kids, hey, y'all, tonight's Papa Do's. <laughs> you know them romaine noodles that we bought five, uh, five, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got five for like a dollar last week. Well, I got a whole special. We're going to make a cookbook for the next 30 days. Everything that we make, we're going to come out with a cookbook. But tonight, we're going to start with romaine noodles. We're going to put some hot dogs in there. We got us some Tony Sachery, and we're going we're gonna to Papa Do's. Because we're in a season of saving and investing. Stop running your mouth to your kids negatively. Kids don't listen to what you say. They watch what you do. That's why some of your kids are messy. You know your kids should have been expelled. But you've been right up at that school with your shoe off. Right? I'll never forget. We were on vacation. Leaking. Went down to the lake. Saturday, put his name on everything. The place came and said, it was a five-star resort. They said, ma'am, do you have a son named Lincoln? I said, why? <laughs> they said, well, he decided to autograph everything at the, at the lake, all the, all, 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 the, all the picnic tables. His name is just done in bubbles. He was very creative. I said, oh no, that's not my son. No. Fault. Finally, when I sat down, I said, Lincoln, would you autograph? He said, yeah, but I thought it was erasing. I fought like hell for him. And he did it. And I said, you know what you're going to do tomorrow? You're going to go fix it. Whatever they make you do, you got to do it and stay in ownership of it. Here's what I'm saying to you. If we're not putting things into place, how are you going to be a generational curse breaker and a generational wealth? The minute I got out of my own way, I have watched God do more in my life in 11. Special Ed, and I'm, I'm on my sixth book, comes out in August, and I'm with the biggest publisher in the world, Harper Collins. And I don't know where commas go. Six figures. Because God knows I don't want to depend on this church. I want to sow into this house. I want to be the biggest giver here. And I want to be able to get up here and preach truth with no secret. You have to get to a place where you take inventory of your life and you say, God, I don't like this, so I'm going to fix it. Take a season. Strongholds, listen to this. Strongholds is anything that attempts to redefine anything that God has already defined. You loved you, but now you feel like a piece of crap. Because you let people in your life that redefined who God created you to be. You know what I have found with people that tell you crap about yourself that are the loudest ones? You want me to tell you who they are? People that ain't doing nothing. Because you're going to watch as you begin to fly. You won't let nobody tell you nothing about nobody. You're like, I am not a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> you are not going to contaminate my spirit. Oh, but I don't know how to tell them to stop gossiping with me. If they got enough, if they got enough, uh, uh, what, I ain't going to say the word because we in church. But if they got enough audacity to come to you with trash on other people, you should have the same audacity to shut them up. 
Say, let me train you in something. I used to be this. I used to know tea on everybody. But what I realized was when I started elevating, I didn't have time for that anymore. So as for me and my life, I am going to stop this right here. I love you, but I'm going to love you in that balcony. I'm going to love you from way up there. Because where I'm going, I got to have some I got to have some iron, sharpening iron in my life. I can't have no butter knife Christians. I got to have some people that won't co-sign on my deprivation. I got to have some people that when I'm having a bad day, they call me and say, girl, take that down. I can't have people co-signing on my junk because they like me being broken because it makes them feel better. That's your responsibility. When you only think on the level of your exposure of what you've been taught, always broke. Yo, I used to be so scared to become a millionaire. Because I was scared the IRS was going to come after me. I was so scared. And then one day God said, you do the right thing. Go get you a CPA. Educate yourself. And then every month you should be growing. Because you're a king's kid. If you ain't growing and you're in the same spot you were last year, whose fault is it? Huh? Ours. So I am challenging you. As we're walking into the summer months, not only are we getting snatched on the outside, but we're snatching back everything the devil has stolen. We're snatching back our confidence. We're snatching back our teeth. <laughs> We're snatching back our power. We're snatching back our sanity. We're snatching back our sleep. We're snatching. I don't need you to affirm me. When I wake up in the morning, I realize because I still got a pulse, God's got a plan. And I realize that I'm the chain breaker of my family. I don't need you to co-sign. I'm going to get up and show you. I'm going to show that God is faithful. That he can do what he started. He is faithful to complete it. Listen, here's 10 signs that you're controlled with the spirit of mammon. The mammon is something that has rule over you other than God. Your paycheck. Money. You ready for this? Number one, you live with worry and anxiety over money. You don't trust God. I'm challenging you to step out. And do something that is going to change the game for your family. Stop waiting. Y'all know I'm a coach. One of the biggest things that I come up against is people that are scared because their family always comes to them and says, you think you're better than everybody else. You better tell me to preach. I've been waiting. They're afraid of success because of their family. You buy your dream car and leave it in the garage. You get that good love in your life and you don't tell nobody. Because you're so afraid. Here's the problem. When you're so used to the basement. I, I feel something coming out of my spirit on this. I'm waiting for it to come through. When you're so used to the basement. The front porch feels comfortable. So you will stop on the front porch because at least you're getting by that you'll never make your way to the top penthouse. You've got to break the cycle. Some of you have gotten depressed and it's eating you up. You can't break out of the depression. All you got to do is get up way, Meg. Miracle work, promise keep, and sing it all day long. David defeated the Goliath with a stone. Saul gave him his armor 
He said, get that armor off of me. I can't fight with your armor. Some of you are in the position you're in because you're fighting with your daddy's armor, your mama's armor. And you've got to break it off of you today. Some of y'all been laying at that pool of Bethesda for 38 years. You can walk. You can walk. But you're scared to walk because of all the torment that torments your mind every day. Fear, worry. I'm too far gone. That's a lie from the enemy. God loves to use people with the worst past to create the best futures. He loves to take the one that didn't even pass algebra in school and give them so many zeros in their accounts. He loves to use people that everybody gave up on. Some of y'all need to be like Noah. You need to stop answering, answering people on your way to the top. And you need to shut your mouth. And you need to stay focused. And you need to do what God told you to do. And you need to let the rain speak for itself in your life. This is your season to take care of you. This season is personal. Another sign. Worry and anxiety. Another sign is money mismanagement. Mammon. Another one is consistent financial lack. Another is I can't afford it mentally. You can't afford nothing. You always said, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Another mammon is impulse buying. You don't need another sheen haul. I got so many clothes, reach out to me. You my size, I got clothes, I'll hook you up. Impulse buying. Stop it. Stop going out to eat and go get you some chicken nuggets at Costco. Then go Google Chick-fil-A sauces and make it from your house. Decorate it with happy faces, whatever you gotta do for your kids. Another one is stinginess. When God takes you to the top, you can't be mad at your family that never was there for you. Because the enemy loves to steal, kill, and destroy. Today in this house and online, you've got to let go of baggage that is stopping you. The reason you go one step forward and a hundred steps back is because your stinking thinking keeps taking you back there. Because you are holding on to crap that don't matter. You're holding on to anger that don't matter. If you wouldn't have walked through it, if they wouldn't have done it to you, you would never be as anointed as you are today. They were sandpaper in your life. And you're wasting the anointing that they were to bring in your life because you can't let it go. Stop trying to get success to prove to them. Maybe the reason God ain't giving you that loan is because he knows. I'm trying to prove to them. And I married that man on Facebook. I never had preached a sermon in my life. I never dreamed in a million years that God was ever going to come through for me. married three years and God began to put me on the ears of Hollywood never in a million years I don't know why in the world they'd be trying to pick on me preachers of Atlanta and God opened the door for the whole world to know who I was because he knew I wasn't going to go to hell for nobody and in that season what God did for me I get called every week for another show There are 8 billion people in this world. I am 51 and I'm crazy as all get out. But God, trust me. You listen to me. If you don't let go of them and they, they will stop your level up. If you are finding any stoppage in your life, you need to get some Holy Ghost Drano today. And you gotta, God, I gotta let it go. I'm so angry. You better let it go. And you know what I just heard the Lord say? Let go of the anger you have for yourself. Some of y'all are angry at yourself. I wasted 18 years believing in somebody that I should have never seen. You did. And now you got free life college. And you ain't got to pay one student long back. Today, you got to hold on 
and say, God, you said that you'll never leave me or forsake me. I ain't gonna stay broke. I'm not gonna stay on the system. I'm not gonna look for the easy way out. Let me walk through this season. I will do whatever I gotta do. If that means going to get me some t-shirt machines, going into the to the sock shop in, in, in Griffin, get me a dollar shirt, and I gotta start making me some transfers, going on Etsy, get me some transfers, and start making t-shirts and putting them on Wazala. I'm gonna pay two dollars for a shirt and I'm gonna make twenty-five dollars, but I ain't staying here because you said if I put one foot in front of the other and I keep believing. You know how many people make fun of my style? But you know, I said I was going to wear green every day, every Sunday this month. And I ran out of green. Guess what I did? Stand up, baby. I even got a man that'll wear my clothes. <laughs> I said, baby, you want to match? I used to die before I'd match somebody. But if I ain't walking it and hustling it, I got to show you how it's done. You can't get it if you are dreadful, depressed. You got to remember that the teacher is always silent during the test. Some of y'all are on 285. Round and around. You're going to be on 285 until you decide to find the exit to get off of. It's a complete circle. And in this room today, God said, if you try me at my word, what does that mean? Ten cent on a dollar. This, this, this whole month, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to get myself in shape. I'm going to get outside and walk. I'm not going to Netflix and chill. I'm going to get boldness. Start speaking life over yourself every day. Stop living bondage to debt. Stop overestimating the power of money. And stop being greedy and discontentment. How do I get rid of it? Shake it off. I prophesy over and online that your days of struggle in relationships and your finances and your health is breaking off of you in the name of Jesus that was so weak I know how hard it is yo I know how hard it is I know how hard it is when you feel like God's forgotten about you. I know how hard it is when you made some mistakes and you feel like you'll never get out. I know how hard it is to praise God on credit. Stand up on your feet. God is sending people in your life that's going to help you elevate. Be sure that your offense panties aren't so wrapped around your neck. That you miss out on the blessing that God brings in your life by getting jealous. God's bringing people in your life that are meant to pull you. When God is about to elevate you, he always does it through relationships. Everybody lift up your hand like this. Say, Father, I give you permission to make me the Joseph of my family. Now I realize that you were just repackaging me to set me on the right course. So devil, I serve you notice that every assignment that you've sent my way is expiring right now. And I refuse to play games with my future, with my kids, with my marriages, marriage <laughs> that I'm getting back up again and I'm becoming the best me that I can be in the name of Jesus come on say it fear break off of me worry break off of me feeling like I'm behind break off of me lack break off of me sickness go back to hell where you belong and Lord Expose any snake that is in my life. Cut the grass down so I can see them. Protect me and my family. And I stand on Isaiah 54 that says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. 
in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I repent of my sins, and I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to come in my heart so that I make right decisions, so that I live right. Convict me of anything that is helping me sabotage my life with my own hands and my own thoughts. In Jesus' name, Lord, blow my mind this week. Come on, say it again. Blow my mind this week. Give me creative juices. Give me favor. Lord, I walk in the fog. I walk in the fog. The favor of God leads me, follows me, and my life and my fruit is speaking for itself. In Jesus' name, I prophesy promotions over you. I prophesy your own businesses. I prophesy homes that you're going to own. You're going to own your house. You're not going to be scared of owning. I prophesy that your credit score begins to come up quickly. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over your character that your character is right. Because when God opens a door, it's up to you to walk through it. But your character is what keeps you in the rooms. So any hidden agenda in yourself, I bind it off you. Any nastiness, any pettiness, any anger, any resentment, any shame, any embarrassment. You will not be afraid to advance. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. How do y'all feel good? Y'all feel good?